and in business, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Institute of Finance and Control of Nigeria have said the depletion of the country's excess crude account signaled pressure on government revenue. The federal government depleted the excess crude account by $253.1 million between January 16th and February 19th. As at the end of the Federal Account Allocation Committee meeting on January 16th, the amount is in the ECA was put at 2 at $324.96 million. However, at the end of the FAC meeting on Wednesday, the balance in the ECA, according to a statement from the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, was put at $71.81 million. I am now joined in the studio by Dr. Franklin Ungu. He is an economist at Lagos Business School. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Thank you for having me. Certainly. Yes, so what's your take regarding the fact that the ECA has declined so much within such a short period of time? It, it's, um, of course, it's not a good story. Of course, it's, a, it's not a good development. However, it clearly tells us the challenges we have in Nigeria with regards to revenue, with regards to uh, innovation in, in, in leadership, in, in regards to the way the governors or the way the, gov uh, the government, especially the governors, always demand that the, uh, what we have in the excess crude account should be shared across the, tiers of, uh, the three tiers of government. I mean, if, if you see the depletion in excess crude account, it clearly shows that in terms of clearly thinking how we generate good revenue in the country, it's not, it's not taking place. Remember mm -hmm. that during the uh, period that Dr. Ngozi Okonjiwala was the finance minister, he, she had issues with the governors where some of the governors said, she said, she said that we should start saving for the running for the rainy yes. day, and they clearly told her that it was already raining at that time, and it should it should be shared. So at that point, it was shared, and uh, gradually uh, we built it up again. Of course, you can see now that it's all clearly uh, uh, going down, leaving seventy five only seventy five million dollars. It's uh, is a challenge. But let me also say that if, when you look at the governance of the excess crude account in terms of the ranking of measurement. Nigeria seems to be uh, worst performing in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. Ghana, for example, scored 93, <coughs> and Nigeria scored only four. So that clearly tells you in terms of the governance, in terms of uh, regulation, in terms of the policies with regards to excess crude oil, in terms of when deposits are made, in terms of when withdrawals are made, who approves it, how. So the general mm -hmm. governance of the excess crude account is quite poor in Nigeria. And it, but it also clearly shows that the governance in Nigeria are not very innovative, are not thinking very well in terms of how do they generate revenue for their different states. What happens is that once, of course, excess crude account is where we keep money that is above our budget, uh, what we budgeted for, mm -hmm. for oil. So for all these years, it should have been, is expected that the governors are the chief executive officers of the different states should have started thinking in terms of how we can they generate more revenue for their states. A situation where a state, when they announce that they have generated 15 billion IGR in a year or 20 billion naira in a year, mm -hmm. and we start clapping for them, is a clear demonstration of lack of innovation and weak leadership in our different states. And now, talking about what you just said, you realize that in terms of revenue generation for this state in a year cannot be compared to what they spend in just one month. That, that, that's the challenge. It's also the same thing. It's not only the states, it's about the, the whole the Nigerian system. If you look at our 2020 budget, we are using 4.4 trillion for recurrent expenditure. We are using 2.4 uh, something for capital expenditure. We are using 2.45 for uh, debt service. And our total revenue is about 8 point something trillion. That means that it's a de already a deficit of about uh, uh, 1 point something uh, trillion. So clearly, it means that every year, and it's been going on for, uh, uh, for many years now, that we keep borrowing many to consume, many to share to the, to the politicians and the public servants. So the question is, and that <coughs> happens in states as well. So the question is, how can you be borrowing on a regular basis? So what is, what, is, what is the plan in terms of repaying some of these debts? So mm -hmm. of course, you know, very soon, if care is not taken, we'll have a debt crisis, which the depletion of the excess crude account is clearly pointing out pointing us to that there is, a, there is clearly going to be a challenge with regards to our revenue, with regards to our physical stability, with regards to our money, even, more, even monetary policies will all need to come, will all, be, will all be challenged. But if you look at the states in particular, the states, the governors, they can actually, they, should, they have to start being innovative. So I think that given what they collect from the federal uh, uh, allocation, 
most of them are just relaxed and are not really thinking. But what they are supposed to do... use it as a capital as a inflow capital, somewhere. As a capital inflow to now develop, develop state. the state and ensure that they have sustainable revenue generation in states. I will give two examples. If you look at uh, Netherlands, they exported potatoes worth over one point something billion dollars last year. And interestingly, the potato that exported from Netherlands is the plateau, the plateau state potato is of more quality, is of a better quality than the one from Netherlands. But plateau state is not exporting much. If you also look at Kenya, exports flowers of almost one million dollars every day to Europe. And I'm talking about flowers of I love you or uh, funeral, as the case may be. So the question is that if, if you think strategically and clearly, you can clearly generate revenue in mm. all parts of Nigeria. There is no state, there is no state that will not be viable if focus the state on an area of comparative, area of comparative and advantage, advantage and clearly think and say, this is what I want to focus and start developing. I'm not sure if you know that if a state can plant 10 million coconut trees, they will generate at least 200 billion naira every year from revenue. Because one coconut tree, the new hybrid, gives 250 uh, coconut trees. And from 100 naira at wholesale price, that will give you about 20 to 25,000 naira per tree. And if you times it by 10 million, that will give you about 200 billion. So what I'm trying to say is that there are so many opportunities and so many areas that the state governors can really think properly to even start, mm -hmm. to start generating revenue for their differences. But they are not thinking because they have uh, um, allocation from the federal government. And every four weeks, they receive a huge allocation. And of course, that means that their thinking cap is not there at all. How do you see this potentially affecting our fiscal stability in the country? Of course, it's going to affect our fiscal stability in the sense that the way we are borrowing is not sustainable at all. I've written and I've actually argued in, in many forums that it is not sustainable. From the way we are going, before you know it, it might, it might put pressure on the Naira and it might lead to a devaluation of the Naira, which will now cause all kinds of uh, crises. It might also lead to a recession as well from the way things are going. So there is a need to clearly think strategically and say, okay, what do we want to achieve in Nigeria in terms of where do we want to take the country to? In terms of how do we increase our revenue and also how do we reduce our cost of governance?